The mechanism of breathing includes four processes, breathing, external respiration, internal respiration, and cellular respiration. So we will begin this unit with a discussion of breathing. As you work through this unit, be sure that you can identify the structures of the respiratory system and discuss their functions. The alveoli have a number of special characteristics that I do want to emphasize here. The following characteristics of the alveoli make them very efficient at gas exchange. First, they are very numerous, up to 300 million alveoli in the human lung. This provides a great surface area for the diffusion of gases to occur. Secondly, they are very thin-walled, but it's not good enough just to say thin. You must describe them as being only one cell thick. This, of course, aids in the rate of diffusion. Third, the alveoli have a coating of lipoprotein on their inner surface. This helps to maintain surface tension thus preventing them from collapsing and sticking together during exhalation. The alveoli are supplied with stretch receptors. These are nerve endings that are sensitive to stretch. During inhalation, they signal when the alveoli are full enough, thus marking the onset of exhalation. The alveoli surfaces have a very rich blood supply from the pulmonary capillaries, to ensure maximum diffusion. In other words, they are highly vascularized. Before air reaches the alveoli, the air must be cleaned and both adjusted to body temperature and 100% humidity. The cleansing of debris from the air is a two-step process. The initial cleaning is done by the nose hairs and the mucus in the nasal passageways. The second is a process that occurs further along the respiratory tract. The mucus lining and the cilia along the trachea and the bronchi act as a trap and a conveyor belt. Pretty well any material other than the gases of the inhaled air will get caught in the mucus lining these structures. The cilia are in constant motion, beating the debris-laden mucus upward toward the pharynx. When this material is detected at the back of the mouth, it is either swallowed or coughed out. The more contact that incoming air has with moist tissues, the closer the temperature of the inhaled air gets to the alveoli, there will be very little difference, if any, in the temperature of the incoming air with that of the surrounding tissues. And finally, one of the functions of the mucous membranes lining the respiratory tract is to increase the humidity of incoming air. Moist air prevents the alveoli from drying out. Moist tissue is essential for maximum diffusion.